So this is a basic, the basic layout of how I'm going to do the rudder and the little trolling motor for this boat. Um, I haven't <laughs> quite decided exactly how I'm going to do the tiller. I think for now I may just keep it simple and leave it exactly like that. Um, I can later do some sort of articulated thing and have it pivot right here in the center. Um, but just to keep it simple, I'm just going to do it like this. I'll put another half inch block underneath it to raise it up. So there's some clearance under it and stuff. Um, this is the little trolling motor I'm going to put on here. I'm going to put a little block back here for this. For the rudder, this is the rudder off the WAPA. It's identical. It kicks up. I considered actually making a mount for it that would hinge up, but it's kind of redundant. So I'm just going to leave it kicking up. I'm going to run a piece of oak 2x2 two two down. Um, screw the... Um, I forget whether they're pinnels or gungeons, but anyway, the mounts that go on the boat, I'm going to um, screw them to the oak, and then the oak will be attached here, and I will uh, brace it in the underneath with a piece of uh, half-inch marine ply, and then on the sides to make it pretty stiff. This will just be a uh, um, half, one inch or maybe inch and a half thick piece of the the uh, fur marine ply that pokes up, and just the plate here basically attached to the back of the Yako and that's to be for the trolling motor. I am eventually going to put the um, oh, what is it called? the trampolines that I made for the WAPA on here because I'm going to have the trolling motor I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of paddling so it's not going to be a big deal to have the trampolines there. Uh, they should actually fit since I use the same spacing and everything and I can just permanently attach them and since the, uh, the ends of the Yakos are going to fold up and it's going to sit on the trailer, I can just permanently strap them on. So that will be really nice. i uh, have some more surface area usable on the boat. Um, I think probably I will we'll sail this, uh, mainly sitting almost in the center, I think. I may have hiking seats, I haven't really decided. Um, and I may have to adjust this tiller, uh, make it shorter or something else, just so how it doesn't hit me when I'm turning. But I can figure all that out once I put it in the water. Uh, I was originally planning on doing the, uh, the mass step and the mass partner next, but I haven't completely decided how I want to do that. I've kind of got an idea. I want to make something that, that uh, you know, conforms to the hull with a bolt-on piece with the mast, um, you know, where the, where the mast needs to go. And then uh, if I decide later that I need to move it forward a couple inches or back over a couple inches, I can simply re-CNC that piece that goes in there, unbolt the old and put the new one in. So I'll probably go with that, although there is a lot to be said for just moving the sail on the mast to change the center of effort, and I may just go with that. But where I've got it marked now is exactly the same as on the other boat as far as where the leeboard is in relationship to the sail. Uh, it looks like the leeboard is going to clear the tiller there, even with it being extra long like this. Um, the plans call for it to act, the tiller to be mounted on the side like that. And I can see because it's got this nice big flare under here, um, which is really nice and slices through the water and makes it really fast. But then again, you can't put a rudder back here. So everything, but yeah, with this big flare under here, you can't mount a rudder back here easily. Um, so everything in life is a compromise. It'll be nice, it looks really cool, and uh, honestly the amount of uh, immersed hull isn't much further back than the rudder, so it's not a big deal. This will mostly be in the air and be slicing through waves. <coughs> so these are mostly done here. Uh, I got a little bit of, um, what do they call it, the waxy build up, the blush on this. And I have, this is a rock epoxy, and I've never had blush before. And uh, what happened is it got rained on. Uh, it wasn't set up and got a little mist on it, and I got some blush. So I, I'm not holding that against the rocker. They're, they're really good. I'm really happy with their epoxy. I will wash it down with soap and water before I start the sanding so I don't just grind it into the epoxy. I put extra coats of uh, epoxy on this to fill the weave. I'm probably going to varnish this just to match this. Uh, the the almonds themselves will be, of course, the green. The top and the hatches and stuff will be green. Um, I haven't really decided on the inside, I may varnish that too. Um, it doesn't have to be as pretty as the outside, so I, I can get away with a little bit of uh, sanding that's not quite as beautiful. Um, so actually I'm not that far from being done with this. Uh, the rudder, as you can see, is already made. 
Uh, you know, the motor is made. I already have the trampoline. Um, the mast has already made the sail and stuff. I'm taking it off the other boat. Uh, I'll scavenge the hardware for the cleats and stuff. So what I'm looking at is probably within a month, I'll have this launched. So you need to extend the trailer out and work some mounts on that. But um, of course, you know, it's, it's kind of cold right now and the water's, you know, 35, 40 degrees. So probably not going to go swimming in or to go sailing in a canoe um, quite yet. So it's not really a big hurry. Uh, if anybody noticed that I missed the week, I was sick. The flu that's going around is really got me bad. I had some really bad sinus stuff. I'm in mean, horrible, horrible headaches. Some really interesting things coming up after I finish the boat. Uh, I'm going to do the power jacks on the camper. Uh, I'm going to do a trailer mover just because I wouldn't do a trailer mover. And some other interesting things. So, you know, the, the boat is not the whole thing for shopping and knuckles. But, uh, but like I said, you know, I'm going to do what I do, and that's the video you're going to get. So I did uh, put some epoxy in here, fill this out, I've got some sanding to do, and some cleanup and stuff. I think today I'm going to work on the mounts for these two guys. Uh, unfortunately, these are not symmetrical. The uh, front is closer together because I had to move it up a little bit. So this will permanently be the back Yako, and it'll only face in one direction, and vice versa. That will be the front one. And I may even do some, uh, um, some mounts or some cleats and stuff, or even some pulleys that go with the mast up there. So, But it'll be almost semi-permanently attached, so it's, it's not really a big deal. Uh, kind of the whole point of this one is that I can fold on the amas, take the mast on and be in the water in five minutes, versus you know 45 minutes for the other one where I have to strap everything together. So, Anyway, I am going to uh, work on these guys here. I will video that, and uh, I'll probably do a video later this week. So I ran these screws in, clamped it on, ran these screws in so that uh, I can get them perfectly realigned when I put the epoxy on. So the screws already have little holes here. So all I have to do is project these a little bit. And uh, once I put the epoxy on, uh, this will line up and I'll be able to screw it back exactly like it was with the clamps on it. Okay, I've got mayonnaise consistency. I'm going to spread this on here, uh, attach this, scrape off the excess, and then do the other one. I want mayonnaise for a gluing application like this more than uh, peanut butter. I know those are technical, technical viscosity terms. But uh, for a gluing application like this, you want it a little bit wetter, uh, especially with the raw wood there. And you want it to be able to squish out and scrape the extra off and reuse it on the other one. There will be a small fillet on the top, but uh, since it's on the top, 
Gravity is going to help you a little bit there. And you're not going to have to worry too much <clears throat> about it running and running down and all that. So that's pretty much covered. I'm wanting this to squish out whenever I put this guy on. Just push this in here. Find the hole. Head up. <laughs> finding the hole here I had a uh, red-headed stepdaughter and uh, I was replacing the heater core in a truck and uh, she was in the engine compartment helping me run the bolt in and uh, I was trying to push it through and then she says you've got it in the right hole you just have to push harder and she was up 15 at the time, and that just rolled off her tongue like she'd said it a thousand times. So, yeah. Just got to push hard. Anyway, you can see it squish out here a little bit. And that's on purpose. And the extra come out. Scrape it off. And. Hope you have enough to do the other. So this, these are a couple of the uh, stainless hinges that I bought originally for the Yako hinges and decided not to use them. I'm gonna go ahead and use them for the rudder. That's the less critical application. Uh, they're coated with some brown wood-looking finish, but they did well, fairly well. So I think they are stainless. Um, this here is just one I cut the uh, barrel and the center part out of, and welded the uh, two plates on. They gave me some screwing plates. A little section of the stainless here to stiffen this up a little bit. This is a projection out here, projects out the same height and uh, length as the uh, rudder holder of the rudder stock itself. Uh, there's going to be a, another board between these guys, probably a 2x2, two two, that's not really ultra critical, it's not a really ultra strong connection. I'm going to use some uh, like inch and a half wide um, strap hinges. And just put a hinge on, on on either side so that whenever the tiller moves, uh, it will move the rudder. The tiller itself is going to sit over the top of this. Uh, I may just put another strap hinge under it so that uh, it will be up. Uh, and that's actually probably exactly what I'm going to do. Although there's quite a bit of torque on that, so I may do something different. Uh, I haven't really decided completely on that, um, but I do want it to be able to hinge up to get it out of the way if I need it, need to. Uh, worst case, I could just screw it down like that. That's actually not horrible. Uh, it's quite a bit up. It still pokes into the cockpit, and on small boats like this, it's really nice to be able to, to uh, hinge it until it completely up out of the way. So I will look at that. Um, I may do like a strap hinge here and maybe a bolt or something that comes up through a hole in the tiller and that way when it's down we've got two points quite a ways apart to uh, spread the load and it'll be really strong. When it's hinged up like this it doesn't really matter, it's not under a lot of stress. But yeah, that's probably it. not even a whole lot of depth. So I need three good strap hinges, an uh, inch and a half wide. Um, I don't think I'm going to bother with going with stainless. This is a freshwater boat. It's never going to be on the ocean. And it'll be under cover all the time. So everything else on here is stainless. But, you know, um, they're actually fairly expensive. Almost $10, $20 a piece for stainless hinges that size. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with the uh, regular galvanized. Or maybe even the zinc plated. There will be a board, like I said, connecting to these two guys. Uh, this Ayako will be permanently affixed to the boat, and uh, yeah, it's coming along. Um, one thing that I do, I like to do, this here is actually for the sheet, and uh, the sheet is right over the pivot point of the hinge, and uh, it goes to the sheet. But a couple of things with this, I think I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a rope harness between these two guys. And um, probably just have a, a loop or knot in the center 
maybe with a quick connect on there, and it'll just float over it. Uh, that'll take all the stresses out of the tiller. Um, I can still, I can probably still run the sheet down here. Um, most of the stress will be taken by the show if I don't know. I will figure it out later. But uh, anyway, this is kind of uh, how this is going to be set up. I have to get the hinges before I can do the crossboard. But I'm liking this. This is going to be good. There's going to be plenty of room under here to stuff stuff. It's not really going to get in the way. Uh, let's see, the motor's going to be here. So how is that going to interfere with the motor? Yeah, I can go way over completely without hitting the motor. Yeah, that's going to work good. I'm going to go with that. So I need to get three strap hinges. And uh, come up with some sort of board. I'd probably just go with Doug Fur. Um, now these, these guys here, I just have them screwed on uh, temporarily with drywall screws. I will probably go with some nice stainless. Uh, I may even go with a through bolt. But, and maybe not here, there's, there's eight of these. Uh, probably a number 10. Um, the counter sunk for here, that'll be probably pretty strong. And here I may, since there's only four, I may go with a, a small through bolt, bolt it all the way through. Uh, there is a little bit of leverage here from the sprays to here. I don't think it's going to bend it, but worst case, it'll, you know, you're putting a lot of force on the tiller and it bends this. Uh, but judging by sailing the other one, uh, the size of the lee board and the rudder and the sail, <clears throat> there was never really a whole lot of force on the tiller. So uh, most of the force on the tiller, assuming it's fairly balanced, is going to be on the panels and dungeons over there, which I have heavily reinforced. So I think this is going to be fine. Anyway, I need to order some um, some strap hinges, or maybe get them a Lowe's or something. Um, but uh, I think that's probably all I'm going to do for today.